Welcome to a lesson on recursive functions, giving an explicit formula that calculates the image of any element in the domain is a great way to describe a function. We will say that these explicit rules are closed formulas for the function. And this is normally how functions are defined in previous math classes. Analyzing the table below, let's see if we can determine the algebraic formula for the function. It may take some time, but in this case, we can define the function f which maps the set of natural numbers to the set of natural numbers as f of n equals n squared plus one, which means we take the input, square it, and add one to get the corresponding output. This explicit rule is called a closed formula. So again, in this case, the closed formula is f of n equals n squared plus one. However, there's another useful way to describe functions whose domain is the set of natural numbers that rely specifically on the structure of the natural numbers we can define a function recursively. For a function f, which maps the set of natural numbers to the set of natural numbers, a recursive definition consists of an initial condition together with a recurrence relation. The initial condition is explicitly given as the value of f of zero, and the recurrence relation is a formula for f of n plus one in terms of f of n, which means to determine f of n plus one, we do need f of n where for an explicit formula or a closed formula, we only need the value of n or the input. Let's see if we can determine the recursive function for the same function shown above. Again, we already know we can describe the function below as the function that maps the set of natural numbers to the set of natural numbers, such that f of n is equal to n squared plus one, but we can also describe the same function using a recursive function. Where to begin, we have f of zero is equal to one from the first column in the table, and the recurrence relation is f of n plus one is equal to f of n plus two n plus one, which means to find f of n plus one, we take the previous function value and add two times n plus one. So looking at our work below, we know f of zero is equal to one because that's given. To determine f of one, notice n is equal to zero since f of zero plus one is equal to f of one, which indicates that f of one is equal to f of zero plus two times zero plus one. And we know f of zero is equal to one, indicating f of one is equal to one plus zero plus one, which is equal to two. Now that we know f of one, we can determine f of two. Notice for f of two, n is equal to one, giving us f of one plus one or f of two, which is equal to f of one plus two times one plus one, Again, we know f of one is equal to two. f of two is equal to two plus two plus one, which is equal to five. Now that we know f of two, we can determine f of three. To determine f of three, notice n is equal to two, since two plus one is three, giving us f of three is equal to f of two plus two times two plus one. And again, we know f of two is five. f of three is equal to five plus four plus one, which equals 10. And now that we know f of three, we can determine f of four. Notice for f of four, n is equal to three, since three plus one is four, giving us f of four is equal to f of three, plus two times three plus one, f of three is 10, two times three is six, f of four is equal to 10 plus six plus one, which is equal to 17. So notice the drawback on recursive functions is that we do have to know previous function value or values to determine the next function value. However, recursively defined functions are often easier to create from a real world problem because they describe how the values of the functions are changing. But as I just mentioned, this comes with a price. It is harder to calculate the image of a single input since we need to know the images of other previous elements in the domain. Let's look at the three examples below. Number one, we have the function f, which again maps the set of natural numbers to the set of natural numbers, which gives the number of snails in your terrarium n years after you built it, assuming you started with three snails and the number of snails doubles each year. The initial condition is f of zero equals three, since you start with three snails. To get f of n plus one, we would double the number of snails in the terrarium the previous year, which is given by f of n which gives us f of n plus one is equal to two times f of n. The full recursive definition contains both the initial condition and the recurrence formula or recurrence relation. Given by f of zero equals three, 
and f of n plus one equals two times f of n. For number two, we have the function g, which gives the number of push-ups you can do n days after you started your push-ups challenge, assuming that you can do seven push-ups on day zero, and you can do two more push-ups each day. So we are told that on day zero you can do seven push-ups, which indicates that g of zero equals seven. The number of push-ups you can do on day n plus one is two more than the number of days you can do on day n, which is given by g of n, and therefore we have g of zero equals seven, and g of n plus one is equal to g of n plus two. And then for number three, the function h is defined by h of n equals n factorial. Recall that n factorial is equal to one times two times three, all the way out to times n minus one times n, which is the product of all the numbers from one through n. And we also define zero factorial as one. So we know h of zero is equal to one. To get the recurrence relation, think about how you can get, think about how you can get h of n plus one, which equals n plus one factorial from h of n, which is equal to n factorial. If you write out both of these products, you will see that n plus one factorial is just like n factorial, except you have one more term in the product, you have an extra factor of n plus one. Which means we have h of zero equals one, and h of n plus one is equal to n plus one times h of n. I hope you found this helpful.